In this clip, I discuss the differences between the Dockerfile commands of entry point and CMD and how you can use them together to automate container startup tasks. All right, uh, Nuno is asking, I need my Docker file command to start a Cassandra server. And after that, I need to import a database schema. What is the best way to do that? Uh, so if someone hasn't already answered you in chat, because sometimes that happens while I'm rambling on, the, the entry point script is sort of the universal way to do things on container startup. So... This means that you have inside your Docker file, you have the entry point and you have the CMD. Now in my course, Docker Mastery, I focus on the CMD because that's really the thing that you need to understand to be at the beginning. What I need to add is a section, uh, at least one lecture on the entry point and discussing the various ways that you can do entry points. So an entry point, uh, when we break it down, the entry point and the CMD are really two parts of the same single line or single command that Docker runs when your container starts. But the trick is, is with the magic of bash scripting, you can take the entry point and instead of it just being the beginning of the command that might be on the, uh, in front of the CMD, it can run a script and then at the end of that script, you can tell it to pass execution to the rest of the command line. So it may not make a whole lot of sense, but Let's go check a real world one out and see what we can see. So I'm gonna pull up MySQL because really any persistent data storage system is gonna act the same way here. And if I look up on Docker Hub, All right, so I'm at the Docker Hub MySQL official image. And if I click on any one of these releases at the top, I will get the Docker file, which is open source. And in this file, you'll find lots of things. You know, obviously it's installing MySQL and getting SQL properly configured. But down here at the bottom, you'll notice a couple of things. One is it's copying a shell script into a certain location and it's running a symlink there, but that's just really for backwards compatibility. But down here, this is the, the key part, the entry point script, which the entry point itself, the command in the Docker file doesn't have to be a script. Again, it's really just taking, if, the, if it exists, the entry point and the CMD, and it's just putting them together and running them all in one line. So you would see this, the two common ways the entry point is used is either for the beginning of a command that maybe if you're using Docker to run a command line utility, I do this in HTTP. Let's see if I can. Uh... So I have a GitHub, I have a Docker image rather, and a GitHub repo behind it. And what it's doing is it's running a single command line utility in a container. And the way that it works here is I have the entry point being the command itself. And then since the CMD goes after that, when I have both of them in my Docker file, it just swishes them together. I have it running the default CMD. So if you think about it, when I run this command from the command line, I can do Docker run Brett Fisher slash HTTP ping. And then I just hit enter and then it will automatically run the version command. But if I keep typing in that command line, right? Docker run Brett Fisher. If I just do that, it's gonna pull the image. Oops, sorry, let me uh, switch screens on you. So if I run this image, it's gonna run it by default and it basically dumps out the help because that's what the Docker file told it to do in the CMD line. But if I just change something on the end, because remember the format of a Docker run command is that it will do Docker run and then it, do your options, then do the image you're going to set, or you're going to uh, run, and then anything after that replaces the CMD in line. So it's like a dynamic replacement of the CMD. So if I just run here, google.com, it will replace the dash dash version that it would run by default. 
So this is a really cool way that you can use Docker Run as a command line utility. And that's a good, that's my example essentially of how to do that. Now, the other way to do it is with, is not that, that's the, that's the one way to do it. The other way is a shell script. So we'll see here, the entry point here is defining the file that it should run. And then if I just scroll all the way to the top here and I do this 8.0 directory, I sort of go up one directory, I'll actually find that there's another file there. That's the Docker entry point script that it's copying in on the build. Now, in this script, what's going on? There's tons of stuff in here, probably at least 100 lines. Yep, in fact, it's hundreds of lines. But the magic part here is this, oop, let me zoom out. Okay, go away, scroll bar. I didn't want to see you. Let's just go to raw. That very bottom line there, that exec, and then the dollar sign at, that tells the shell, hey, I'm ending this script, please pass the execution to the rest of my command line, which would be whatever's in the CMD. And in this case, it was the MySQL daemon. So essentially what's gonna happen when the container starts up in this case, is it will run the script, it gets to the end of the script, the exec says, please do whatever else I told you at the end of this command, and that runs your daemon, your, your MySQL daemon in the foreground so that it stays running. Now, what the script does is all the things you probably didn't realize were happening in the background when you started a database container. It creates the default user that you wanna set. It changes the root password to whatever you want it to set. It creates the, the, the database based on what you told it. And it's doing all that in environment variables, right? Because if we backed up to, uh, let me just duplicate this. And if we backed up, to the library. You know, on most of these official images, you're gonna have a whole bunch of environment variables and it specifies them all down here. And all those environment variables are used in that script to pre-configure MySQL. Now in the file itself, if you were actually to dive into it, it is setting some environment variables and finding files in case you're using Docker, Swarm Secrets, stuff like that. And then it's basically getting every, all the data it needs to configure it. Then it starts up MySQL, configures it, including changing the root password and all the other things. Then it shuts down MySQL and then ends the script and then passes that execution to MySQL to start up again, but this time for good. So it's essentially starting SQL, doing some things, stopping SQL, starting it back up. And that's the way that all these work, all these persistent storage systems inside of the official containers work. So for you, the long answer to this question is that you're gonna want to use a, uh, your own custom entry point script. Maybe you copy the default one, if there is one, or maybe you make your own. And then you would make your own image that would then create that schema initially on the first startup. Now, once you have your, your schema inside the database, uh, you know, you're not going to really want to update schemas that way. You would want to do further schemas um, through some other utility outside of that container, right? You would run your MySQL commands from another container, and then they would run over the network, something like that. Now, you don't have to change this at all. You could simply have it start up your Cassandra and then add the schema from a remote, from a different container, but you would have to control that order, right? You would have to wait for uh, Cassandra to start up. You would have to have another container that maybe has its own script. And then that script maybe is smart enough to keep checking for Cassandra to see if it's ready. And then when it's ready, then run your schema, either schema update or your original schema installation, essentially. Uh, you could do it that way. And that, in a lot of cases, is probably the right way to do it. But especially when you're doing local development or you just want to spin up something small and easy and you just want to build a schema the first time and you want it to do it automatically, then what you would do here is you would use the official default image and you would add your own schema and file to that in your own custom image. And essentially it would, when it started up the first time, it would do that. Now, here's the problem, and you gotta watch out for this. This entry point script runs every time the container starts, at least from that image, right? From that image that you had built, the custom one. So you wanna make sure that your script is smart enough that it doesn't rerun the schema over and over again on an, a database that already has the schema. So you have to build in that intelligence 
And that's why sometimes, depending on your model, if you're thinking of updating things regularly, or if you're constantly moving databases around in a swarm cluster or a Kubernetes cluster, then doing it inside the database container itself may not be the right strategy for you. But this option exists. So check it out. And that is like the cliff notes on what to do with entry points, which was not in my original course. So I could probably just add this video in there uh, and at least have supplemental material for now. That's probably better than having nothing. Thanks for watching. Click the subscribe and the notification bell down there will let you know when I go live every week to take your questions on Docker and DevOps. You can watch these videos over here or you can just go watch those cat videos you've been meaning to watch. <laughs>